That wasn't right. Hello! And welcome to That's Pro Speaks. Today is Wednesday, January 17th, and this is episode 212. I am your hostess, Amy Beth, um, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry, and the Fat SQRRL on Instagram. Don't worry, my tea is almost over. I've had to rewarm it like four times. <laughs> so I'm down to like, I'm down to like a quarter of an inch, don't worry. Hmm. Oh my goodness, y'all. Did you see me making that face? That's the face when you make that you're like, oh, was I recording this whole time for all this comedic gold that I was putting out? The answer is no, you weren't recording. Luckily, you discovered it before you completed the entire podcast. But really, okay. <laughs> anyway, here are some things that I did talk about that are important, and the other stuff we'll just have to recycle for some other time. Thing number one. <laughs> um, needles up. What? Needles up for Maryland sheep and wool. Um, VIP tickets are going on sale today. What? Now, if you're like, I don't know if I'm a VIP, don't worry. That's okay. You can come to the event. It's free. VIP tickets are for folks who want to be there an hour early. They want to show up at one, do their shopping, do their visiting, and be gone. So, if you're like, no, no, I'm cool, I'll go from two to six, then you do not need to have a VIP ticket. But if you would like one, they are only $5. And you can buy them on LegacyFiberArtsLLC.com or something like that. Um, that link is at NeedlesUp.com. That's right, the Friday of Maryland Sheep and Wool, I will be participating in Needles Up yet again. How exciting is that? Come buy bags from me so that I can give my dollars back to the other vendors. <laughs> Just have a big, nice money recycling unit there. Right. Have you seen Andre's so stinking wool rug hooks? That's not the right words. There's wool, there's rug, there's hook, but they're not in that right order, so sorry. Uh, <laughs> they're amazing. Look at the birds, always amazing. Maybe there will even be a baby human, I don't know. I can't guarantee that. Just saying. Tuft Woolen's amazingness. She's an amazing human and she makes amazing soaps and perfumes and balms of all the sorts. Classy squid. You know you want those birch bats. I'm just saying. You know you want them. It's gonna be awesome. Okay. So, now I will send you back to me actually talking about knitting and spinning. So I really, the universe was just telling me to shush. Because all I did was whine about how cold it was, um, how I have to be the motivator for my household. But really, can we get just take a minute for a, mm-hmm. I know you're out there. You feeling me? You feeling me? Are you the household motivator? Can I get a week off from that? Can I? Because even when you go on vacation, you still got to be that motivator. Because otherwise, people just sit in the house all day. Just saying. We'll like a break from that. It's a bit of a rant about that. And then what else was there a rant about? Now we're left. I'm sorry. Part of my catharsis, what I realized I did not record this entire part of the episode, was to have my lunch of an egg roll. Now my lunch was not supposed to be an egg roll. But it needed to be an egg roll. <laughs> but anyway, so that's what I talked about in a nutshell. It was funnier than that, way more interesting and compelling. But the universe didn't want you to know about it. So there. Now let's talk about some knitting. Okay. I don't know what's happening. What's being weird? So that reminds me, I'm wearing my swancho. No, I'm not. I am wearing my excuse me poncho by Mr. Steven West. Let me just discuss, he has even touched this excuse me poncho at Rhinebeck. 
2016. So, <laughs> it is a delightful winter garment. Okay. I don't quite know how to wear it out in the world because if I need a coat, like I don't know how to negotiate that. I feel like I have to like bunch it up under my armpits, but then my boobs are already there. So I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> So, but it's a perfect inside garment, okay? You can like flip up this bit. So when you're really chilly, you really want to claw, fog up your glasses, then you just roll with it like this. If you have to like go do some stuff around and about and you get warm in the quichon, then you can, t well, mine, I made mine with a button because the pattern is written with it like as a solid turtlenecky kind of thing. And like, I got too much of like this. You know what I mean? Like too much of that for a turtleneck because I'm all like, <laughs> so I split mine. So that's what I did. I just did not make it a single unit. I made it open like that. So that you can also turn it down if you're getting a little too warm or if you just need extra drama because so anyway so that's what this is uh the yarn this is hand spun from hello yarn and then the background color which is this like rusty color is um rowan's like pure wool just like the cheapo version of rowan uh, which i totally dig by the way it's totally useful yarn it's quite enjoyable. Okay. So, let's talk about some stuff. Um, unfortunately, fortunately, I don't know. No shenanigans, please. Are you kidding me? It's not the weather for shenanigans, people. Shenanigans involve like shoveling things, and I've done enough of that. So no more shenanigans <laughs> till the thaw comes. Okay. You know, really, the shenanigans have all been, like, shoveling snow. Motivating my child to shovel snow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dealing with uh, mixed fractions area problems. Uh, yeah. Not so much on the exciting levels. However... I, I have been listening to that Dorito Effect book that I talked about last time. Who did who did write that? Who did write that? Who did the writing of that? Some people can remember these things. Not me, my friends. Um, it is by Mark Schatzker. Ooh, I'm about to expire. I need to renew that. Um, and so I have kind of paused out. Oh no! Don't don't talk right now, sir. Oh, I only got. Oh no! Wait. I only have like an hour left, so I need to finish re listening to that. It's actually very interesting. I have enjoyed it quite a lot. Now, I will say that his, um, I don't know if he narrates it or not, now that I say that. Um, his writing style feels a little bit like when you read a self-improvement book and you feel like they're drawing out the book because what they really needed to say they could have said in like a paragraph and a half. But their editor was like, no, we can't sell this book if it's only a paragraph and a half long. You need to make it 112 pages. It feels a little bit like that sometimes. Not that the whole book could have been a paragraph and a half because there are so many interesting examples and things like that. But sometimes I'm like, he does a little bit of that like, hey, what do you think about this? Pulling it back. What do you think about this? Pulling it back. And I'm like, dude, just give it to me. I paid, well, I didn't pay. I rented your audiobook. just tell me. Do you know what I mean? Like, you need, like, the no-nonsense version of the audiobook. Like, I don't want to edit it, like, abridged per se. Just remove the, like, the fluffy garbagey bits. You know what I mean? Just give me the interesting stuff. That's terrible. Uh, full disclosure, I've never written a book. Okay. So, that's who I'm, I am. A person who's never written a book. So my judgment is not valid. Um, but it is so interesting. If you have, um, animal issues, like, cause he references some tests that were done, which were fascinating. They're all about like, um, having a sheep 
that is really low on, I don't know what sheep need. Let's say calcium. I don't, I'm making this up. So you, the sheep is super low on calcium, so it needs lots of calcium. Well, they like put calcium on this food that sheep traditionally do not enjoy. Um, so like it's called something even terrible, like not stinging nettle, but it's something like horned bad taste weed or something. So they put the calcium on the horned bad taste weed and suddenly the sheep is like, oh, I will eat this horned bad taste weed. Thank you very much. So it's all about like how like these nutrients actually inform what we eat. And they reference this study that was done in the 20s and he doesn't get into it because it's actually a human study where the, um, the scientist who I believe is a woman, it really sounds like she took like 20 maybe like orphaned children or children that would have been um, given up to the state. <laughs> I feel like it was in the 20s. And raises them without, with like free selection of food items. Sorry, the glare is really ridiculous. Free selection of food items, but without access to like sugar or something else. Anyway, um, and just basically lets them feed themselves. And so many of them came to her with vitamin deficiencies, like, I don't know, like 40% of them had like near rickets or something. And so it talks about how like these kids would like drink castor oil, which again, nobody wants that, right? But these children who needed the nutrients that were in those foods would automatically consume them without prompting because they were in their just pure like biological state and had not been influenced otherwise. The like kids were eating all of this like calf liver and stuff like that, but eating like the entire range of things that were offered to them at certain times when their bodies clearly needed certain, certain nutrients. It was very interesting. So basically like there's the whole thing about like food, like, um, like how we've changed our foods in terms of like growing foods for production versus for taste. Um, and things like that, but and a and nutrient because that's you don't get money for having extra riboflavin and stuff. But it goes back and talks about so it's that's like a big chunk of the book, but then a big chunk of it also is just like what what creatures naturally feed on, how we feed on things, and like how we are you know we're animals and we just forget it sometimes for a minute. Um, but it's a fast, it's very interesting. So yeah, I had to take a minute off because for one thing, it is one of those books that will like get in your head, right? Like, cause you eat all the time by requirement, not cause you're a fatty McFatterson. I heard you, I heard you out there. Bring it down. Nobody needs that negativity. Bring it down. <laughs> but you know, because you're a human, you do need to consume nutrients. So, and as the person who provides the nutrients for the other humans in this house, by the way, <laughs> I always try to be so hands off with my kiddo. Like I limit like certain things like, okay, you can't eat candy 75 minutes a day, but I try to be kind of like a little bit about it because obviously I don't know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. So let's just let some nature happen, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Nature bus plus occasional McDonald's. I'm oops, uh, human. There is no castor oil in my house. None. Anyway, the other day she was so hungry and she really wanted chicken strips. She needed a chicken tender. Well, the chicken tenders are in the basement in the deep freezer because we don't eat them that often. And they're kind of like just one of those backup foods. She just laid around and was hungry. She just like skipped an entire meal because she was like, can't go down the stairs and get that. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I digress. <laughs> really the motivation of these humans. I can't do it anymore. I need a vacation. Um, what are they talking about? This podcast is totally about wool stuff, yo. In a minute. Oh, now somebody's calling me? What is happening? Nobody ever calls me. So anyway, it's a very interesting book. Again, it's called The Dorito Effect, if you missed that in my like 20 minutes of rambling about it. 
oh, so I had to take a break from it because it gets in your head. Like I'm eating food and I'm just like constantly like, why am I eating this? What is my motivation? Am I needing this nutrient? Am I, it's, I'm like trying to time my vitamin supplement with like the most helpful food so that my body will be like, oh yes, we thought we did not like Brussels sprouts, but now you've been taking like a multivitamin with them. So we know that they're very, very powerful foods. Let's eat some more of those. <laughs> I still don't like Brussels sprouts. I really want to like them. They're so beautiful and charming. I like some other brassicas. I do not like Brussels sprouts. I try don't tell me, I know. I've tried roasting them. I've tried having other people roast them. Like maybe I just have like a bad black brassica thumb or something. I don't know. I just can't get into it. But I think if I just keep eating them with a multivitamin, <laughs> my body's gonna be like, okay. That sounds good. So there's like, so it's so, so, so interesting. I started thinking about like the whole like enriched flour thing. Maybe the reason I want pretzels all the time is because they're made with enriched flour and secretly my body just needs that thing. One of the things that's in enriched flour. Maybe it's also because they're delicious, but I'm just saying. So you just start thinking about it way too much and it's kind of crazy, but interesting. So again, that's the Dorito effect. Such a hot mess. You're a hot mess too. I just can't see it because you're over there. <laughs> Don't tell me you're not. I'm calling you out on it. <sighs> Let's talk about some knitting. Okay. Very quickly before I forget, I usually don't do shameless self promotion until the end, but I just am afraid I'll forget. Because, hi. New moon, man. Did like all this work to try to ground myself out earlier this morning and it totally worked. I, in the moment I was totally ground dead out. But now I'm like the kid who was quiet all day in school and is all just like Ka -ka! when they get home. So, sorry. <laughs> Not sorry. <laughs> if you're going to the Knitting Pipeline retreat, oh my gosh, I'm gonna see you. It's in Washington, Illinois. It's not one of those fancy other ones. Not that the Washington, Illinois one isn't fancy. But yes, I do want to go to the Maine and the Georgia retreats eventually. But right now, I'm all about Washington, Illinois retreat. If you're into circular sock machines, there's somebody on eBay, eBay who's selling a circular sock machine and she lives in Washington, Illinois. She doesn't know if her sock machine works, but she has one. FYI. <laughs> this is the pipeline bag for this year. What? This is the sweater size. I will put pre-orders uh, for the bag up in my shop at the end of the week. So that's Friday, January something, 19th, I think. And they'll be up there for about a week. If you don't get one, don't worry. I'll have some at the retreat. Uh, but of course they have the wooden tag that my bags have each year. So the lighting is like being really weird today. What's happening? But isn't it loverly? That's a great pile. So yay. So that's happening. <sighs> One more housekeeping thing. Um, I did get a new camera. So I'm real so thanks, Patreon people. Yay, Patreon people! Woo! Yeah. If you would also like to be woo! by me <laughs> you can support the show at patreon.com slash fat squirrel or you can just google the fat squirrel patreon and it'll come right there i checked it myself it works anyway so there's a new i have a new camera um i used it last week and this week so if you're seeing some like weird colorness it's because i'm trying to get used to the settings and what's going on. So I'm not really sure at this point if like what I'm seeing is actually what I'm getting because it's still new. So if you're seeing, if you're like, ah, uh, A, tell me like, hey, that episode was way too green. And I'll be like, I'll try to fix that. Because sometimes it's like, it's like mixing your own perfume, like where you're like smelling stuff so much that like eventually you can't smell anything anymore. It's like that. You're like looking at the video so much and adjusting it so much that suddenly you're like, 
yeah, legit, I have a purple face. That's that's exactly what the color should be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just stops making sense. So. Now let's talk about knitting and spinning. <laughs> I finished some hay homespun. So this is four ounces of Three Waters Farm mixed BFL, Walk in the Mist colorway, and four ounces of Nest Fiber Studio, Young Woman at an Open Have Door. It's 363 yards, so it's like worsted-ish. Let's be intimate with one another and our yarn. So that's what it looks like up close. It's like very puffy and fluffy and nice. I've been spinning for, oh my gosh, you guys, I just realized the other day that I've been doing the podcast for like almost six years come February. Six, this is so close. Hi, how are you? Six years. So that means I've been spinning for six years too. Okay, so do you see all of this inconsistency? <laughs> See how some strands are really fat and some strands are really skinny. I'm totally okay with that. I don't know, I guess it'd be nice if I was like perfectly consistent, but I don't want to take the time to be perfectly consistent. I'm a B student, y'all. B student. <laughs> I'll work, but if the difference between a B and an A is like 117% more effort, I'm going with the B. So this is some B spinning and I dig it. So anyway, what I was trying to say was like, if you're new, because I know a lot of folks like get spinning wheels for Christmas or they treat yourself to some spinning wheels for Christmas and then they're starting out now as so they get discouraged because they see beautiful stuff. Well, A, six years still inconsistent. You'll be fine. <laughs> Let go of the fact that you think you're a prodigy. Secretly, we all do, right? Secretly, somewhere, there's like a little corner in our brain where we're like, yeah, I'm going to be a spinning prodigy. So I'm going to pick it up and like whip out some gorgeous, like three-ply fingering weight. It's going to be a maze. And then you get there and you're just like, what is this that I made? Oh, why does my body hurt from making yarn? This should be my, f <laughs> this should be my picture of everything. Hello, driver's license. But like, you're like, why does my whole body hurt from making this yarn? Because you've been so tense the whole time that you've been literally like, Ehh. like it's okay. It's a learning curve. Like that is my biggest, like that's not even the right word. Cause that word's kind of, you are gonna stink at it. It's been a long time as an adult, probably since you've learned something completely physically new. Like, yes, on Thursday, you were like, I'm gonna learn Spanish and you just learned some Spanish. It was using your brain, you know how to use your brain, you know how it works, right? But like, when's the last time you learned to do something physically very new? Probably when you learned to knit. Do you remember what that was like? It was like this. So it's okay if, if spinning is also like this. You know, it's okay. Release expectations. <laughs> That's my biggest advice to new spinners. You're not a prodigy. If you are, yay you. But you are not. Don't, just let it go. <laughs> You're gonna be bad at it for a while. It's fine. Then you'll have fun yarn. Yay. So there's that a random strand. Where did you come from, Mr. Strand? I don't know, but I'm going to knot everything up when you try to cake me into a ball of usable yarn. I know you are, Mr. Strand. <sighs> That's a very poorly twisted up skein, but look, it's a little boy boy. Okay. Knitting! Okay. I finished the thing. It's mega tiny, but look at it! <gasps> Shut up! Now I've already forgot what it's called. <laughs> it's 
It's, I think it's called the Milo vest, right? You know, because everybody's made them. I had never made one before. I don't know many people who have babies. The people I know have already had their babies or not having babies. Um, so I'm not as familiar with uh, the baby knits. But I'm pretty sure this is the Milo vest, which is a pay for pattern. Really? It's not in here? Okay, I'll put a link in the show notes or I'll try to remember to put the actual thing down there. Like the, ooh, look, clever me. But I really feel like it's called Milo, but why isn't it in my PDFs? What's wrong with me? Anyway, it's super cute. And it's aged like zero to three years or something like that. It is called Milo. I was right. And it's by Georgie Nicholson. And it has, so it's this little top and it's from th zero, so from infant up to six years. I'm totally going to make toe wear one of these. Why didn't I do that? Lame. So... <laughs> So if you're like, well, it's a pay for pattern, but it's so tiny. Well, A, you get a lot of sizes. They also include several cabling options. I went for hugs and kisses because it's a traditional favorite of mine. And this is not a super wash, but it's for a knitter. And I know it's kind of like an odd yarn choice. It's hand spun from Rambouillet Roving. So it is definitely a woolen spun yarn. And you can see it's super uneven, crazy pants. But there was this part of me that was just like, I want to have the baby like dunked in wool. Do you know what I mean? Like, welcome to the world. This is part of it. So that's why it's very wooly and not super washy and kind of crazy. <laughs> it just spoke to me that way, so I needed to make it that way. So maybe I'll make the mama like a less crazy one too, but I don't know. We'll see. Maybe not. I made some washcloths, so that'll balance it out, right? That's like a practical thing and a wackadoodle thing. We'll see. <laughs> but isn't it just so cute? I'm like, even if she's like, just wears, the, puts it on the child once or not at all and just puts it on a stuffed animal or something, that's fine. It's the intent, right? Like, it's the good energy that comes with it. So, welcome to the world, little baby. Look at you. Yay, that! So, that is my only finished object. I did kind of do a hoe. Um, I finished one of my Porthos socks, which is a pattern by Kawa Coffee. All right, that's what it says. By the way, thank you. Somebody, when I was like, Porthos Musketeer, what is happening? That's the name of one of the three Musketeers. Public school. <laughs> okay, mathematician. Not really, I can't even use that word to describe myself, but definitely not English major. This is Hazel Knits Artisan Sock in the Woodland colorway. So somebody asked me the name of it and I didn't know at the time, but it's Woodland, yo. It does want to be known. So this is a fun little pattern. I gotta be honest with you. It's kind of, I'm just accepting the fact that I love hand knit socks. I really love to give my grandparents hand knit socks because they love them so much and they're so freaking adorable and they're both not well. 2017 has been rough y'all. 2018. Come on honey. So they're both not in the best of health and so I really love giving them socks but boy I am not I'm so slow at knitting them but so that was all to say that this pattern is super cute and very fun but I, it's even slower a little bit. It's it's slightly less slow than just regular stockinette just because it's like okay I'm gonna finish this chunk you know but it's a little slow but it's super cute and it should be real stretchy for Peppa. yay so there's that I started the cuff of the other one I have like two drops <laughs> and so then what have you seen you saw my hohi I am knitting the granito that's not it 
by Hoagie Locatelli. And it is knit with Beaver Slide Dry Goods, two ply sport in their Juniper Heather colorway. So that looks like this. By the way, this is such a huffing yarn. So woolly smelling. Just need to huff it a lot. And by the way, the folks at Beaver Slide Dry Goods are super awesome and kind. Excuse me. Um, I think I ordered five skeins of this. Yes, I ordered five skeins of it. And by the way, the put up is crazy. It's called sport fingering or sport sock or something like that. And it definitely is between like a, it would be a very lightweight sport. Um, but the put up's like 450 yards for four ounces. And really it is probably a sport because it's very airy. So it's got a huge put up. But she weighed the, the skeins before she sent them and she said, oh, they were a little bit light. So I just included an extra skein for you. So super kind of her. I no charge. So again, that is the Hohi Locatelli Granito. And I have divided for or split off the arms. Uh, I am knitting it completely in the round. So my sleeves are steaked. So if you're like, what is happening? That's what's happening, I guess. I'm not sure I've not, I've never, I haven't in recent memory made a drop shoulder sweater. And that's what this is. It's like a very relaxed, it doesn't have as much positive ease as like a boxy, uh, but it has that dropped shoulder. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous about it, but I think the yarn has, so I'm, I'm a little bit you're nervous about how big to make the sleeve because I usually know how big to make my sleeves because usually they fit right here. But with a drop sleeve, it's a little bit different. But the nice thing is because of the way the construction is done, there's no armhole shaping at all. So if I find that it is, I've made the, the opening too big, it'll be very easy just to seam it closed a little bit smaller. Um, if I had to, I could steak open even more if I so if it's too narrow. So. That's one really nice thing about very basic shaping is it's easy to modify even after the fact. So hopefully it's gonna work out well. Okay, so there it is. It's so pretty and green. It is slow going though. I am a fat lady, yo. That is a big circumference and sport fingering weight and it's got some ease in it. It's a lot of stitches. So, I'm working on it. I'm only like maybe an inch after the armhole. I had to take a little break and I'll show you what I worked on next. So the next thing I'm working on, which I literally did not bring with me. Are you kidding me? All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> it was totally just hanging. I brought the bag which has enough yarn in it that made me think there was something in it, but there's just yarn in it, not an actual sweater. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm knitting the Gigi, which is by Devin Ventra, Ventre, sorry, of Knitting McPurley, um, which Paula of the Knitting Pipeline has talked about on an episode. She's talked about some modifications that she did. I cast this on shortly after Rhinebeck, I think, I want to say. Uh, oh no, actually it was like think before Rhinebeck, but then it kind of just sat for a while for no good reason, just because I got a uh, Christmas knitting and other things were going on. So I picked it back up. Mine is knit with knit with, oh my gosh. Mine is knit with Peace Fleece Worsted. I know, right? What's with the green all of a sudden? I haven't done anything green forever. Suddenly, everything's green. Um, this is the gonna be all right green. Don't lie to me, green. And so, isn't it beautiful? It's a really beautiful color by Peace Fleece. Peace Fleece is a woolen spun yarn. It is spun by Harrisville Designs. So you can buy the yarn on their site, um, Harrisville, I don't know if it's yarns, whatever, just Google Harrisville Yarn Joe. I think this was a limited edition colorway because I did not see it on their site. Um, I actually looked to see if I could get another skein because I thought I would do something different, but I only have, I think, 
six skeins of this. So I'm actually a little bit tight on the yardage. We'll see how it goes. I can always do the pond. I can do the insides of the pockets in a different contrast if I need to. And I can um, modify the neckline because the neckline is like a thick folded over neckline. So I can change that and just make it ribbing if I need to. So there it is so far. Raglan shaping. So I've just separated or joined the sleeves. That's not even right. I've just joined the underarms of the sleeves. I don't know what's happening. What am I saying, people? Okay. So um, traditionally for our raglan shaping, modifications I make are to increase the rate of, bust, of increase for the bust and usually the arms. Now this one has a larger arm proportionately than most other patterns. But I still needed to increase a little bit more, so I just did what I was familiar with. <laughs> um, so what I what I usually do is increase, which is just usually increase every other row, right? Every other row? Or every other right side row. I can't remember now. I think it's every other right whatever. I usually do the normal rate of increase until halfway down the arm side. And then I start to double the rate of increase um, just for usually the bust and sometimes the sleeve. Sometimes the sleeve's a little bit wonky. Like I won't have to really do it every, I won't actually have to double it, but I'll have to like multiply it by 0.9 or something, you know, whatever, just feel it. Just Or I'll double the increase until it gets to the size it needs to be and then I'll stop. You know, just, yeah, it's knitwear. It's flexible. <laughs> So this time what I decided to do is actually do the double increase every, so, okay, so normally you increase every right side row for a raglan. Okay, it just came to me. So what I did on this one is I increased, um, as usual, except every other increased row, I did a double increase. So that should work out to be about the same as waiting until halfway through and then increase. But I don't, I think maybe it's actually better for me to do it the other way where I increase, because you know, like I'm actually normal size until the boobs start. So it makes sense to do the normal increase rate until boobs and then fast and then make it faster. So we'll see how it actually works um, on. I think it'll be fine, but we'll see. A little bit concerned. It looks a little bit bubbly right here, but I imagine that that will it'll block out. We'll see. <laughs> so anyway, I thought this would be super cute to wear. Um, with like the tunic dress number ones or whatever. Um, and it would be just a good layering piece. And I needed a break from that finer weight um, sweater. So this seemed like a good answer to both of those issues that I was having. The f whatever. Okay, keep moving on. <laughs> and that's all. Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm sorry if this one was a little bit more out there than normal. Which is saying something with this podcast, okay? If you are an iTunes viewer, I did release a origin story podcast, uh, but I only did it on YouTube. Um, so you can find that on the, my YouTube channel if you enjoyed that or would like to see more of that kind of thing. No, because there's only one origin story. What am I even saying? But if you would like to see additional episodes, <laughs> <laughs> that are maybe not the traditional, like, this is what I've done this week kind of format. Um, feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, like things, because that all bumps me up um, so that other people can find the podcast, so that other folks can be interested in it, so that the Patreon f uh, f uh, funding helps do that kind of thing. So I appreciate all of your support. Okay. I think that's all for this week. Can I see you? Okay, so I told you the dogs just got their hair cut, right? Thank you, Olive. Do you, can you see her in profile? I'm, <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, Olive. Do you see, does she remind you of anybody? Come on, I'll try to get her so she's in profile. Does she remind you of anybody? Does she remind you perhaps of the mad doctor? on Nightmare Before Christmas. Do you see it? 
Am I the only one who sees it? <laughs>